Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, October 23rd. So the moon is in her rulership in Cancer Energy here all day. And of course, this is the first official day of Scorpio season. We just had the sun shift into Scorpio energy here last evening. And with the sun in a water sign and the moon in a water sign, we're definitely feeling a lot of different things. There is an intensity in our intuition. There is an intensity in our ability to kind of feel through what it is that we have been thinking through. And with Mercury also in the Scorpio energy, we are going to have some clever epiphanies pop off, providing us with solutions that not only intellectually, logically, practically make sense, but that intuitively and emotionally make sense as well. So of course, the moon in her rulership, we are kind of introverted. We are seeking familiarity. We want to stick to what is tried, tested, and true. We're looking for emotional safety, security, and stability. And of course, this is going to, again, make us hypersensitive, again, reliant on our intuition, and put us in a situation where we realize where it is that we have to kind of shut the mental plane down and let our heart space lead the way. There are eight different aspects popping off here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The only aspect that does not involve the moon is involving Mercury. So we kick off the day with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the Scorpio energy, again, with the detective hats on, kind of looking back, piecing together some of the information and details that was right in front of our face at the time, but we just didn't notice. Again, we're kind of bringing things up in order to break things down, in order to get to the matter of fact, to the truth of a situation, of a circumstance. We are using our intellect with our intuition to kind of read between the lines, to kind of see the interconnectedness of some of the situation, circumstances, and scenarios that have already popped off that are putting us in this particular position to not only look back for a greater understanding, but to be very present with the power and control that we currently have over some of the options, opportunities, choices that we currently have that, of course, is going to help us plan and strategize for our future goals, visions, and dreams. We have Mercury making a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. Jupiter is retrograde now in this Gemini energy. And so the cleverness, the intellect from Gemini, the cleverness, the detectiveness, and intuition of Scorpio energy painting a very, very beautiful picture. It's helping us to think bigger and broader. It's helping us to zoom in on the smaller details, understanding how they are connecting to reveal the greater, grander whole. And we are definitely interested in problem solving, in planning, in strategizing. And this particular interaction is helping us do all of those things. Just when we get off to this, you know, beautiful start, especially feeling a little bit more powerful, a little bit more confident, a little bit more clear in our mental plane, of course, there has to be a little bit of a drawback. And the drawback is the moon in Cancer Energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off, creating tension and conflict with Chiron, the wounded healer, who was retrograde in Aries Energy. So a square is going to illuminate the growing pains that we're currently going through. And of course, you can see where the moon in Cancer, very attached to the past, very attached to, again, keeping things the same old, same old. While Chiron, the wounded healer, knows that we can't keep things the same old, same old way if we want to grow, if we want to heal, if we want to evolve. We sure as hell cannot be looking back at some of the painful, traumatic situations and circumstances that we've just gone through and romanticize them to a point where we're deluding ourselves of a particular reality, of a particular wound. It's like the moon in Cancer is trying to justify some of the situations and circumstances that we've just gone through, not being as bad as they were, not creating the kind of pain and trauma that they actually did in our emotional realm. Chiron, the wounded healer, is here to help us heal. 
here to help us tackle those pain and trauma moments, those pain and trauma scars, and actually open up our mind, open up our heart space to being real, raw, and vulnerable enough to do the deep work, to actually figure out how these pain and traumas actually got planted in our consciousness, in our experience, and what we can do to empower ourselves to fix them, heal them, repair them. So the growing pain here is, is that we want change, we want to grow, we want to evolve. But emotionally speaking, we're not willing to do the work as of this particular juncture in order to do those things. We're holding on to the old, we're kind of gripping what has been for dear life. And of course, when we're holding on to things that are no longer serving us, it makes it pretty hard to move away from particular places, people and things that of course have created wounds that Chiron wants us to heal. You cannot heal in the same environment that harmed you. And this is a great, great example of just that. So things are going to turn around pretty quick because we have the moon in Cancer, then making a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, of course, retrograde in Gemini energy. What we're getting here is a little bit of a head shake, if you will. We're coming out of that tension point with Chiron. And now we're starting to kind of give our head a shake to realize that guess what? We know better. OK, there's no point in sitting around crying over spilled milk. There's no point in sitting around in the victimhood mentality. There's no point in sitting around having a death grip on the old when all we've been doing is praying for new, praying for change. Jupiter in this retrograde in the Gemini energy means that we have information, wisdom and knowledge within us that we've already learned and accumulated, usually through the tough love life lessons that we've already been through, that we're not using, we're not integrating, we're not putting into practice. So this particular interaction is kind of illuminating, emotionally speaking, where it is that we kind of have to get out of our own way. We have to realize where it is that we're holding on to the old out of fear, doubt, insecurity, that we're not going to have new opportunities, that we're not going to have the ability to create something new. And because Jupiter is magnifying the information and knowledge that we currently have within us, we know better. Therefore, why aren't we doing better? The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who, of course, is in Sagittarius energy. Venus, she's trying to have a little bit of fun. She's trying to relax a little bit. She's trying to experiment and explore her heart space. There's been a major pivot there. She has a new want, need, and desire that she wants to pursue. She has a new vision of what she wants her life to actually look like. And in Sagittarius energy, we're optimistic, we're confident, we actually believe that if we can dream it, we can actually achieve it. However, Venus, she's very focused on the future. And of course, the moon and cancer, very connected to the past. So of course, there's the detachment there, because even though we're thinking of all the possibilities, all of the different variables that we could experiment and explore with in order to create a happiness, a joy, a new safety, a new security, a new stability in our lives. Again, the moon and cancer having a death grip on keeping things the same. And so emotionally speaking, we're not at the point yet where we're willing to let go, where we're willing to get out of our own damn way in order to try different things. You have to try something different in order to create a different result. 521 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Cancer is going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Mars. Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in this cancer energy, not his most favorite place to be, but he is in preservation mode. He knows what matters to him. He knows what he's willing to fight for. And he, at this particular energy, is willing to fight, defend, protect all of the things that he's built, that he's created, that he's already brought to life, that he wants to further to grow and expand and build upon. A conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. And again, we are putting behind us our, let's call it, want, need, and desire to hold on to what we've already built, what we've already brought to life. There is an aspect. There are people, places, and things that we have worked very hard to establish in our lives, to have a relationship with, to build upon, to strengthen upon, that we're not willing to let go, that we're not willing to change. 
However, this is going to put us in a situation to kind of figure out what we need to hone in on. We're tapping into a new mood, a new attitude. It is the warrior spirit that Mars lends us in order to have the courage, to have the motivation, to have the determination to see something through. And although we would like to take action and make moves on the new ideas, on the new intuitive insights that we're receiving, we cannot act on impulse. And because of that, we're super frustrated. We have ants in our pants. We want to unleash them. We want to make them work for us instead of against us. But at this particular point in time, inaction is the name of the game. And Mars hates to be still. He hates to be in a position where he's not able to take action and make moves in some kind of way. And so there is this, let's call it reset, renewal energy that comes with a conjunction. But at the same time, Mars's mission is energy management. We have to know when to assert ourselves, when to initiate, and when to stand still, when to observe, when to really lean into our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, our intuition, in order to wait for that green light. We have the moon in Cancer energy, then going to sextile, which is a beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to kind of help us see where it is that we're coming up with some easy solutions, some easy changes, some easy adjustments in order to let certain structures go. Again, Uranus's retrograde and Taurus energy should be illuminating for us where it is that, again, we're holding on to the old for no good reason other than the fact that we're using it as our safety blanket. We've outgrown certain people, places, and things. We have nothing left to learn from situations and circumstances that again we seem to have a death grip upon and so you know the moon in cancer not really open to making changes not really wanting to kind of see where it is that we do need to let go of the past however because this is a sextile because this is a gentle nudge in the right direction emotionally speaking we're giving ourselves permission to just take a look at the smaller adjustments that we could make in this present moment in the here and now in order to start creating distance space between us and the things that we know we have to let go of the moon in Cancer then going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction with Neptune, who, of course, is retrograde in his rulership in this Pisces energy. Again, just a reminder with Neptune in a retrograde, we don't have the rose colored glasses on our face. We are looking at life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. We are wrapping up karmic chapters. We are closing the door on old dreams, old visions. We want to, again, tie up the loose ends of the past so that when Neptune Neptune goes direct, we can put those rose colored glasses back on, we can start kind of building towards new goals, dreams and visions. But right now we are in an ending chapter, we are in a completion chapter with many different planets, Neptune being one of them. So having the moon and Neptune come together, of course, this is a trine, which means that we're working with like minded elements. And in this case, it's water on water. Water cleanses us, it purifies us from the heaviness, from the weight, from the junk, from the gunk that we have been sitting in. And then it refreshes us, it renews us in our emotional realm, in our soul, in our spiritual realm. It puts us in a situation where we are aligning with our higher selves, tapping into our intuition and receiving downloads, receiving insight on what this new dream, goal, and vision is actually going to look like, what it's going to feel like, because we have to hold that particular goal, vision, and dream in our mind's eye in order for us to do the hard things, which is closing the door on the past, cutting the cords with particular people, places, and things, and wrapping up the karmic chapter that, again, is no longer serving us. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Cancer energy, making an awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who, of course, is retrograde in Pisces energy as well. Again, an ending of a chapter, a closure, completion chapter that Saturn is helping us to wrap up. With Saturn in a retrograde, this is about looking inward, where it is that we kind of have to get out of our own way, where it is that we have to break down, where it is that we haven't felt 
deserving or worthy of happiness, of joy, where it is that we have to have a new willpower, a new discipline in order to do the hard things. This has everything to do with our belief system, with our ability to dream and manifest, our ability to tap into our higher selves and allow our intuition to lead. Saturn wants to bring structure to our inner realm so that we can figure out what we have to build in our inner realm in order for us to start seeing those particular shifts, those changes in our physical realm. The change has to take place within you before you're going to be able to manifest it in the physical reality. So the moon is kind of, you know, emotionally speaking, trying to find that safety, security and stability. Saturn is showing us where it is in our inner realm. We're actually creating more anxiety than there needs to be. We're holding on to old belief systems, old dreams, old visions, old ways of going about things. And what we have to do is kind of get rid of that particular structure, get rid of that particular way of going about trying to bring our goals, visions, dreams to life and implement a new plan, a new strategy, a new structure, a new routine, a new foundation on how it is that we are going to be better, how it is that we're going to improve, how it is that we're going to create a much stronger place of our intuition, of our mental plane, in our inner realm so that we can get in alignment and then engage the physical body to take action, to make moves, to bring something new into form in our physical realm. 